Well, apart from having to deal with college applications along with other schoolwork, I think the most challenging task as a senior, at least for me, was to find acceptance in the fact that high school will be coming to an end and we all have to move on in life. I feel like that is just part of growing up and everyone goes through that phase of having to really accept that fact. I'm Caleb and this is my senior 2021 um 21 questions so the most challenging task as a senior i would say is really applying yourself to decide on what you want to do or really where you want to go because i really believe that regardless of where you choose to go anyone from patrick taylor that as far as i can see has a good future ahead for them and I think that knowing that and truly believing that is imperative in deciding where to go for college because you really, in a lot of cases, can't go wrong. And I'd say the biggest factor to decide is where you would be most comfortable or happiest um, and apply yourself as much as possible there. That and not falling into the whole senior slump thing, um, kind of slacking on assignments, which is easy to say even though I'm kind of in that boat. The hardest part about being a senior is having to wait for all those responses, for those emails, but patience. Patience is the thing that you need to take away from it. Hi everyone, I've been asked to share some information about your senior year at Patrick Taylor, so let's get into it. So for one, how should you prioritize your time? For me personally, the best way to prioritize your time, obviously, do your schoolwork, get some extracurriculars in, join a club, you know? It's pretty fun. Go out and do some volunteer work, look at colleges, go out and see the universities for your own eyes, because that can be pretty fun sometimes. Hi, I'm Colin Doherty, class of 2021 senior, and I'm here to answer some of the questions for the underclassmen. So the first question I have is, how should juniors and seniors prioritize their time? So juniors and seniors should prioritize their time mainly working on as much work as they can do to keep up their GPA because that's going to be important for college admissions and like just applying for colleges in their free time making sure that they can get as many applications in as possible as early as possible because that's going to be really important but you want to keep your GPA up take as many of the ACTs as you need to to get a decent score that'll be acceptable and just really work on everything and make sure you're good on college. So how should juniors and seniors prioritize their time? For juniors, I would say just look at colleges, even if it's like a little bit a day. Um, explore whatever option you possibly can at your own pace. Join weird, fun activities in your neighborhood. Learn about yourself and learn a little bit about the universities that you might be wanting to go to because you really can't learn too little at a time about it and you you i think you feel more comfortable the more you do you should apply to colleges the summer before your senior year uh, so if you're not applying you should start looking into where you're applying when there's deadlines are and really getting your head together on what you want to do or where you want to go you don't have to know what you want to do but I applied in July. I think the most important thing you could do academically in high school to prepare for college is to really have a study habit set for yourself because everyone has a different way of studying and being able to really recognize what works best for you will really help you in college. Hello everybody, uh, my name is Nathan Wynn and I'm a senior from Patrick Taylor as you all can probably guess and I will be answering a few questions for you guys today um so the first question is let me see um what are your hobbies and interests um well my hobbies and interests are um, I like to call them the three P's um, puzzling piano and poetry 
So, like, I, I love puzzles. Um, and mechanical puzzles, you got, um, paper puzzles like Sudoku, and, like, you know, and, um, jigsaw puzzles, like, here, yeah, um, you guys can't see it, but I have a jigsaw puzzle by me. Um, and, like, um, I think that poetry, um, is, like, like, well, poetry is my creative outlet, like, you know, it's how I express myself, and I really think that, um important to have a creative outlet, you know, like, it's really nice to have, like, something that you can feel proud of, that you create on your own, so I think that, like, you know, like, it doesn't have to be poetry, but, like, I think if you pick up a hobby, like, drawing or something that you can create, that's a, a very a nice thing to have, and also, like, I play piano, but, like, you know, um, I think that you should also play an instrument, and it's also, that's also a very rewarding experience, um, I have found. You know, and as for puzzles, well, like, you know, puzzles are just, like, a fun way to exercise your mind, you know, in different ways, stuff like that. Um, I think that's also important. Next question is, what should students do over the summer? So, for, for like, a freshman and sophomores, you should just do whatever schoolwork you have and try to enjoy your summer the best. For juniors... If you're going to be a junior, like sophomore turning into a junior, same thing. You can start college then, I guess, like the applications. But definitely for juniors who are becoming seniors, especially with the COVID pandemic. For me, I started applying like over the summer to a lot of places because I just wanted to make sure that I could get into the places I wanted to get into and have applications. Start working on Common App. Start filling that out way ahead over the summer so that... You just have everything ready for whoever needs it. So you should definitely start on that. And then also just enjoy your summer because when school comes, I have trouble like not being tired. Just enjoy the sleep over the summer and enjoy yourself. So what should you do over the summer? Well, over the summer, obviously, great thing to do is look at colleges again. Go to some universities, see the campuses, see what they have to offer. But honestly, over the summer, going into 12th grade and for 12th grade, enjoy your time. Because it's your last year of high school, and you just got to enjoy it while you can. So those are my tips for any incoming high school seniors. How much did standardized test scores help when applying for college? So standardized test scores really help because they, for me... It helps you, if you have a really high one, like top 30s ACT, you can get into most colleges, but the higher your ACT score is, that's normally what'll decide your financial aid at that college, like scholarships offered with your GPA. So you wanna have a really high standardized test score slash GPA in order to get the best scholarships. So really work on that and then also if you can get your ACT in the top 30s or SAT really high up, you would also just want to just have it really high just for admissions. It's going to be really important, so that's going to be a big factor. Um, how much did standardized test scores help with applying for college? I'm assuming ACT counts for that. A ACT and SAT is what this is referring to, not like LEAP for middle school. Um, a lot. I got a 34 in the ACT. And... Honestly, like high 28s and 30s, even that is so good for college scores. Taking those ACT classes, ACT prep classes, and really paying attention in them is outstanding for your record and for getting scholarships especially. I know USM, all you need is a 30 and a 3.0 GPA, which pretty much everyone at Patrick Taylor has, um, and that's full tuition. It helps a ton. It is, it is insane how much it helps. Um, very, very useful. What did you do to study for the PSAT? Okay, so for the most part, practice. Practice, practice, practice. And not just any practice. Like, um, so I think you, some of you guys might know, he probably came, uh, his name is Alex Gershanik, and he basically, like, you know, trains, like, people, helps them with the PSAT and stuff like that as his job. And he came to Patrick Taylor, and he helped us with, um, that. 
And what he did was, basically, he just gave us practice tests. And I think that, well, he gave us practice tests and he helped us with some of the questions. But I think the most important part is to do the practice tests. Like, there are about, like, 12 free practice tests online that you guys should be able to find easily. Like, you know, you find them on Khan Academy, stuff like that. But, like, um, I'd say do the practice test. Like, go somewhere quiet. Like, I use my dining room and just practice them in as realistic of an environment as possible. Like, you don't have to do, like, a full session. Just, like, you know, do, like, each test individually as a full session. Like, you know, a whole test, but don't... um. Um, you don't have to do like all four tests at once. You know, I take like a few hour breaks and stuff like that. So yeah. Now, should you worry about your GPA? The short answer is kind of the long answer is more that GPA is not the only thing colleges look at. They look at who you are as a person and what you've done in your life. So if your grades are okay, then you really don't have to worry about your GPA at all. Don't look at the numbers. See, it's like 4.2 and be like, oh, I got to get it up because you really don't. That's good right there. Your GPA, it matters, but at the same time, it doesn't really matter. Of course, you want to do your best to do well in school and get good grades because that's what you're supposed to do as a student. You know, you're supposed to study, you're supposed to do your homework, take these tests, all these things to get good grades, you can get into college. But on the flip side of that, just because you don't have a 4.0 doesn't mean that you're not going to be able to get into college and get good scholarships. I know personally, I don't have the best grades. I don't have a 4.0 GPA. I don't have a 36 on the ACT. But I still got to my number two school. They're giving me, I'm going there for practically free. And it's like, I feel like since we go to Patrick Taylor, we're in this mindset that we have to get straight A's. We have to have a above a 4.0 GPA. We have to have a 36 on the ACT. And I don't even know what the highest score in the SAT is because I didn't take it. <laughs> but I feel like we have this Patrick Taylor mentality that we have to be the best of the best. And since we're like we see people who are doing better than us or have better grades than us we devalue ourselves and i feel like when you compare yourself to a student who goes to a regular school in louisiana you realize that you're not stupid you're just going to school with people who go to the number one school in louisiana and i feel like we have to recognize that because we're very hard on ourselves when it comes to grades and especially test scores but at the end of the day you have to realize that you're more than just a test score, you're more than just your GPA, and you're more than just your ACT or SAT score. Those things don't define you. What defines you is your character, you know, your personality, what you do in your life. It's not all about grades. Even though you should still try your best in school because that will help you get into college, help you get these better scholarships. But don't sit here stressing because you have a 3.5 GPA and you think you're gonna have to go to a community college, you won't be able to go to your number one school with good scholarships and good financial aid because that's that's not that's not true. I am of two minds as to whether students should worry deeply about their GPA. See on the one hand, my first instinct is no, you shouldn't worry deeply about your GPA. Uh, it is simply a number that is semi arbitrary. It is it does have some basis in reality, but it's just a number that people ascribe, but it is not indicative of a student's worth. Um, on the other hand, colleges do look at it. It is objectively important in the real world. Uh, you should definitely care about it, and you should uh, pay attention to it. You should try and keep it up, but to the point that your GPA and stressing, worrying, and fixating upon it starts to weaken your personal mental health, I feel like you should not worry deeply about your GPA because at the end of the day, it's not the only thing colleges look at, right? They look at extracurriculars, they look at standardized test scores, they look at your uh, service opportunities, they look at who you are as a person, they look at your essay, they look at you as a well-rounded figure, and your GPA is honestly one small part of what goes into that. So it does help a lot to have a good GPA. But if you're in Taylor, I'm assuming your GPA is fairly good anyways, good enough to not get immediately rejected from every college. Certainly, every student at Taylor has the ability to have a high GPA. If you just try your best, the GPA will follow naturally 
afterwards. Your GPA is secondary to your effort, is I feel like the best statement I can make about whether you should worry about your GPA. To stand out in your college applications, the only thing you can really do is, in fact, be yourself because no one can replace you. Oh, why do you think that you were chosen for the Patrick Taylor Scholarship? Oh, um, so I think that the big three things that they were looking for pretty much or like four, well, yeah, four things would be extracurriculars, service hours, um, scores like grades and test scores, stuff like that. And I would say also essays. So uh, I'll be honest, I'm not that big on extracurriculars or service hours. I didn't really do much on that part. But um, I had very high like um, uh, test scores, like, you know, SAT, um, ACT, stuff like that. But I think the most important part would be the essays. Like, you know, the essays allow you to express yourself and um, I really did my best to take advantage of that and I took advantage of like, you know, like, you know, telling my story, like the two essays would be like talk about your past and talk about your future, basically. And I tried to uh, really like, you know, write about like what made me who I am today, you know, like I tried to find like, you know, a moment in my life that really affected me. And as for my future, I just wrote about my aspirations, my dreams and aspirations, stuff like that. If I could start school over again, I would put less of an emphasis on my GPA and my grades and put more of an emphasis on making friends and having collaborative learning, I guess. Um, I started at Patrick Taylor in sixth grade and I felt like in middle school, the atmosphere was super competitive. And I don't know if that was, if, if only I felt like that or if everybody felt like that, but it felt like um, I wasn't striving for my personal best. I was only striving to be the collective best. And I don't think that benefited me as much as striving for my personal best would have benefited me. I think it's really important to put an emphasis on your mental health and setting your own goals instead of letting other people set your goals for you. It really clicked sophomore year that learning should be collaborative and that you should be learning with your peers, not just alongside your peers. Um, if you could start over, what would you do differently in school? I would definitely have been looking at colleges sooner getting my applications out sooner um because again you really can't go wrong just apply to places it's that simple uh, especially coming from patrick taylor i think we all as a baseline you are good enough for a lot of places that you might be interested in especially in louisiana um that strong background i think in academics really is all you need to get started to look at places and look at where you might want to go um, I, for the first half of high school, was a little, I had certain medical issues that made it a little difficult to explore like that, especially for freshman and sophomore year. Um, so any opportunity, whether it be in school or non, I think I would, I should have been taking if I, if I could have, and I should, I feel like I should have been pushing past, um, the circumstances I had. Because, you know, you always want to say, oh, I wish I had done that. Whereas, I don't think I would have been, oh man, I was really sick at the time, or tired at the time. Um, I wish I hadn't done that, like, no. Looking back on my high school experience, if I could start over, I probably would have gotten involved earlier. I would have joined more clubs, got more leadership. Number one, it looks really good to colleges. And number two, you make such valuable connections that you only get to experience in high school. Once you go to college, it's a bigger, it's a bigger pond. And when you have this small community that you can get involved in, it's really special and valuing that sooner 
I wish I would have done that. Hey, my name is Chase Perkins, and so I first got to Patrick Taylor when I was in seventh grade. I was a little, a little twelve-year-old, a little tyke, and so in that time, in those six years that I've been here, I've done a lot of extracurriculars, uh, such as cross country, which I did for six years, um, such as baseball, which I did for six years, and then basketball, which I did. I probably shouldn't count that, but um, I, I appreciate all of them because they all taught me something that school can't really teach you, uh, which is how to come together as a team to accomplish a goal. And so it really teaches you teamwork. And you can really apply that to a larger scale in your life, you know, whether it's like with your colleagues or whether it's as a community as a whole. Um, to accomplish something that's bigger than all of y'all and that's very that's a very uh, important aspect of life and I appreciate uh, that sports taught me that and then what extracurricular activities have I been involved in so I've been in Boy Scouts for since sixth grade so seven years now I've been in NHS for two years I've been in Moo Alpha Theta for two years I've been on the SGA board as uh, I've been president of the class two times, I think, but I've been really involved in Boy Scouts specifically. That's where I met a lot of my friends. That's where I learned a lot of the things I learned to continue in life at this point, like just different basic skill skills, just different friends I have, I gain from there. So. That's really where I got the bulk of my stuff from in life is just from being in Boise. I am president of National Art Honor Society. I'm president of Climate Club. I am vice president of the LGBT Club SAFE. I am a member of Key Club and No Place for Hate. And I've held leadership positions at some point in both of those clubs. But the most important thing about those clubs for me was getting to connect with people that I wouldn't usually connect with. As a senior, you kind of stay in your own bubble. Teaching younger students about the culture at Patrick Taylor is really valuable. And knowing that those clubs will continue after I'm gone is really special. The way I stay motivated to do extracurricular activities and projects is by not doing anything that doesn't genuinely interest me. So in middle school and maybe freshman year, I would suggest that you branch out and do as many extracurricular activities as you think you might enjoy even a little bit. And then you can figure out what you really care about and what you really want to dedicate time to when you get to be a sophomore and a junior because those projects that you spend a lot of time on are what really make a difference on your college applications. And if you enjoy an activity, you'll, you'll want to spend more time on it just because you enjoy it. And that'll, that'll come through on your college applications. We're not looking to check boxes on our resume. We're looking to build experience that you can talk about on your applications and colleges want to see what experience you gained in high school that you'll carry with you in the future, not just what you did in high school and how it ends there. So never do anything that you don't actually want to do because the experience you gain won't be worth it. You don't want to waste time doing stuff you don't actually enjoy and actually spend time doing the things that'll matter to you. The way I stay motivated to do all these extracurricular activities and projects is really through finding joy in everything that I do. It gives me also a sense of purpose when I do something. And I think that's what really kept me going and not losing energy and not procrastinating because I know that everything I do serves a purpose and it's important. Juggling school along with extracurriculars, it can get kind of hard. I know when I was younger, it was a lot harder than it is now. And I guess that's due to my experience being a student athlete who is also involved in a lot of extracurricular activities inside and outside of school.
but I never I remember when I was younger it would be a lot harder for me to I guess manage my time wisely because I didn't have that experience but now that I'm older and I've gotten into the routine and into the rhythm of knowing what I have to do and when I have to do it and how much time I have to do it it's gotten a little bit easier and also for me I have leadership positions in it and a lot of these um, activities and clubs so it's like I kind of have to set an example for the younger kids and I know that I can't slack off because then they'll think that they can slack off which isn't right because I know when I was younger I had good role models to show me that I can't slack off because they weren't slacking off and they were working just as hard if not harder as I was when I was younger and at the end of the day it's my commitment to the team you know my commitment to school and I know that if I don't perform well in school that I won't be able to do my sports or extra correct extracurricular activities. Who was, who or what was most influential um, for motivation or inspiration? Actually, uh, I would usually look up to people on the grade above me or the grades above me. Actually, so like Alex Fryer was a very big inspiration to me, not only because. Um, he was a very good runner. Uh, you can't really understate that. But we all know that um, Alex is a good runner. But he was also very dedicated when it came to school. And so I found that inspiring that he could not only be an exceptional athlete, but also be an exceptional student. He kind of had the best of both worlds. Um, shout out to Hannah Montana. And so I found that inspiring. And Colton Schnabel was also inspiring in the same way and uh, yeah so I found that inspiring that they could be both uh, they could really be student athletes and yeah and the last question I have is who or what was most helpful or influential to you in your high school career both in school and outside of school so I have like two answers to this one the first answer is Mr. Curran he's had the best classes that I've ever been in because instead of just having multiple choice tests all the time and being told you're wrong, you're able to just freely express yourself. And Mr. Courage is just everyone's favorite at Pat Taylor. And I know I'm speaking for almost everybody when I say that he's just one of the best teachers ever. And so he's, he's just great. I really like this classes because he always just helps you grow and will support you no matter what. And then what was most helpful or influential was also probably Boy Scouts. It's just always been there for me. I met a few of my friends from school there, like Alex Fryer, who was in the class of 2020, and Jack Henderson, who's also in the class of 2021. So that's been most influential. It's really helped me get through high school. I've been able to make plenty of friends through there and just survive. So those are my answers, and good luck through high school. Patrick Taylor has really great teachers pretty much across the board. So everyone has their own teachers that have been super helpful to them because all of our teachers are just really great. But I would suggest when you're in middle school and when you're starting out high school as a freshman and a sophomore to build relationships with the teachers that you like and that you've connected with in your classes and just keep them uh, on your radar, I guess, for when college planning comes along. And so, so that you can ask them for like letters of rec and stuff. But the people that have been really helpful and influential to me, um, Ms. Khan and Mr. Curran have been super helpful with college planning for me. And they just give really great advice about college or about your education in general. And Ms. Klusendorf and Mr. Ragland have been really supportive of me um, choosing what to study in college. So I'm going to be a STEM major and they've been um, really supportive of that and have helped me, I guess, plan for college and my major and stuff. And also the people that I've had as mentors at the National World War II Museum as a volunteer there have also been really supportive of my decision to study STEM in college and 
just planning for that kind of thing. Um, what class have I enjoyed the most? This isn't really a surprise to anyone, but definitely Apes with Miss Krause, which I'm still in. Um, every class I've ever had with Miss Krause has been fantastic, and I've loved all of them. But Apes has really helped me solidify my love for environmental science, but just the environment and animals and uh, the different relations between them and us as human beings and how we can improve the effects that we impose on it and what we take away while we give back. And so my favorite class at uh, Patrick Taylor, my favorite class was probably fine art survey, which I took freshman year um, with Miss Poche. And I really liked that class because it allowed me to get creative with how I went about solving problems or coming up with new solutions. And so she would give Miss Poche would give us these projects, and she she left it up to us how we should do those projects. And what that did was it opened up new doors for creativity, and so. It allowed unique approaches to accomplishing those tasks, and so I really liked that. Um, and that's what I would say is the most important thing that you can learn and take away from your high school experience is trusting yourself, trusting the process, being patient and knowing that if you're trying your hardest, if you're doing your best, good things will come. Don't stress too much. You're putting too much pressure on yourself. Just be patient. My final advice to anyone who wants to improve their high school experience is really to enjoy everything in the moment and to always put forth your best self. So as a class, as a class of 2021 senior, uh, I know that sometimes life doesn't go the way you always planned it in your head. You know, you kind of have this perfect image of how you want your senior year to go. Or not even your senior year, just life in general, how life uh, should pan out for you. But it's important that you figure out that that image that you want is not always important. And sometimes it's just not going to go like that. Most of the time it's not going to go like that. But that doesn't really matter. What does matter is that you accept that it's not going to be like that. And you can adapt to the changes and you can make the best out of what's given to you. And so you find something new to make out of life. Thank you. The most important thing I learned in high school is that everything in high school is literally high school drama, quote unquote. Once you come to the realization that these little trivial things that you're experiencing now is going to be something you're going to laugh back at in the future, then life becomes a whole lot easier because there's some things that I did in middle school or even like my freshman or sophomore year in high school that at the time I thought was so embarrassing. I thought the world was over. And now that I'm a senior, I'm like, wow, those things really don't matter. I really like... I cried over this, I stressed over this, I talked to my mom about this stuff, and now like none of that stuff none, none of that stuff matters. And I feel like in high school, the most important thing you learn won't be in the classroom. I would also just like to add that in sixth grade, I was the kid that I didn't want anybody to talk to me, I didn't want to talk to anybody. I wore black, I covered my face with hair and black makeup. And now I am doing this video that people will watch and I am running clubs. I'm in a lot of clubs. I'm really involved. I know almost all the teachers and I did horrible in middle and high school. I almost failed out a couple times. I'm not perfect. And now I have almost a complete full ride to a school that I love and I'm happier now. If you just keep going and you're patient with yourself and you're kind to yourself, things will get better and they'll go your way. I was able to 
grow and change throughout high school and allowing yourself to do that growth is really important. As a freshman, junior, or sophomore, I wish I had known that everything was going to be okay because I was always so in my head and in the present that I tend to forget all my successes prior. And if I had known that everything would eventually play out, I would have had less anxiety over things that I couldn't control. The advice that I would give to the underclassmen would be don't be afraid to try new things. Value the time here. You may think it's dumb. You may think it's hard, but this is the only time that you're gonna have this community of people that are here for you. And I would also say, be patient with yourself. Be kind to yourself. You're not gonna be perfect. Nobody's perfect. Don't compare yourself to the highest performing people in your grade because at the end of the day if you're trying your hardest if you feel good about what you're doing then that's all that matters and you are good enough and you'll get through it i made it through why can't you as a class of 2021 senior, I know that Patrick Taylor gave me everything that I needed to succeed and it truly made me into the person I am today. Leave a like and subscribe.